for the best look at the military past of Brownsville, well, we're headed to the Palo Alto Battlefield, a lesser known battle, but one that would forever change the future of not just Brownsville, but the entire United States. Here's National Park Ranger, Daniel Ibarra. You have two countries, the US and Mexico, that are each laying claim to Texas. And at that point, Texas is a little bit larger piece than what we're used to today. We know um, that shape, you know, that's like the 1836 right, shape. Right. So even though Texas had declared independence and won a revolution to prove it, Mexico refused to recognize its sovereignty. A small problem that would become a very big problem when Texas joined the U.S. in 1845. President James K. Polk, his mind, what he's actually looking for is the purchase of what was two huge states of California and New Mexico. Mexico doesn't want to talk about the sale of that territory until they settle the Texas issue. But Polk is saying, what issue? There is no there issue. Is. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, so you have this impasse, which breaks out into a conflict that stretches across uh, wow. to the west, you know, into what is now California. The U.S. had manifest destiny in its sights. And when negotiations broke down, President Polk called in the only man for the job, General Zachary Taylor, old rough and ready. Kind of see why they call him that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he wasn't much into how you looked for the part, just do your job, essentially. Uh, in contrast to Mariano Arista, uh, wow. Mexican general, uh, he's old Spanish army. You, you know, can tell. He, he's a transplant in that tradition of the Spanish army. The uniforms of each army highlight the same differences. One full of old world pomp, the other made of cheap wool and the same scrappy get it done mentality that had won the U.S. its independence just 70 years before. Okay, so here we arrive, the Battle of Palo Alto. The first major battle, fairly traditional, you know, lines and columns, uh, big uh, open area, which is why this spot was chosen. A wide open coastal prairie for two young nations to battle and definitively establish both their boundaries and their fates. The Mexican force held the southern side of the field with a force of 3,200 men. The U.S. on the northern side with only 2,300 soldiers. So, you know, this is essentially dead center of the battlefield where we're at. Uh, wow. Off to this side is the Mexican battle line, you know, marked off by those flags. That's what those are, and the yeah. blue cannons. Yeah, you can see the replica cannons. Those are replica Mexican eight-pound field guns. And over here on this side, you can kind of make out some cannons off in the distance as well. Wow. Uh, U.S. six-pounders. While this does feel like a really large battlefield, you could have still seen the enemy standing in the distance a few hundred yards away. Oh, definitely. Uh, you're looking at roughly 700 yards or so in between, yeah. which is typical for this type of battle. So okay. this is basically U.S. six-pounders versus Mexican eight-pounders. Not in their favor is those bigger guns are outdated uh, oh. by about 70 years. To break that down, for every one cannonball the Mexicans could fire, the U.S. could fire four in return. Not to mention that the weaker Mexican gunpowder couldn't fire the balls as fast, which allowed U.S. soldiers to simply move out of the way. The battle here raged for over five hours before the sun went down and the army ceased fire. The Mexicans lost over 100 men that day. The U.S., only four. And when the sun rose the next morning, well, the U.S. Army awoke to a surprise. But when they wake up, all they see is the remnants of what was left of the Mexican battle line because they've moved on. Uh, General Arista has decided, you know what, I'm not going to do this a second day. I'm going to take the fight into the brush. That decision would set up the Battle of Resaca de la Palma. The war itself would continue for another year and a half, ending with the U.S. occupying Mexico City, forcing the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, and securing over 500,000 square miles stretching to the Pacific Ocean. Manifest destiny was achieved. Do you think people realize the importance of this war and how it just basically changed the entire trajectory of our country? I, I don't think so. It's it's starting to get a little bit better. I would hope that people, you know, just become aware of it. It's part of this larger conflict that, you know, ended up really changing two countries. And so the atmosphere and experience we're trying to create is we want to take you back to 1846 from the sounds, the sights, uh, and then, you know, as far as the stories, we hope to bring you those stories. That's all, awesome, Danny. Thank you so much. 
If you liked this video, chances are you're gonna love another video that's somewhere right about here. Or you can visit thedaytripper.com. But above all, what I want you to do most, remember the Alamo. I'll see all y'all out on the road. Bye, Condios, amigos.